What is question number four, you might ask? <laughs> question four is what is the hardest part about transferring schools? So I think the hardest part about transferring schools is figuring everything out for financial aid, which we just went into in depth. I think that's probably the most confusing part on any of those. Other than, uh, I guess stress is what I, I'll say is the premium answer here, <laughs> because stress is what is going to be going through your mind 24-7, especially when you start doing the transfer. Abby mentioned right off the bat she felt like she was disappointing her family when you were going from Florida back to uh, up here in Northeastern. I think the stress on all sorts of angles is the stress on transferring, disappointing your family. You're not really disappointing your family. Hopefully not. Uh, if your family You're is not. okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, disappointing family. Um, you know, if you were hanging out with your friends at that college, you were there and then you're like, hey, this isn't a good fit for me. Disappointing your friends from that school. The stress of the financial aid package. I feel like stress encompasses everything. And... The only way through it is to just take it day by day and do things as we discussed and reach out and talk to the guidance counselors, go out, meet new people, have new experiences, try to get that financial aid, FAFSA, 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 FAFSA. as soon as you can, and then one step, one step, one step, and then the stress slowly starts to diminish a little bit, and then you're feeling more normalized and you're more into a routine, more into your college experience instead of a transfer experience. So I think that is my answer. I don't know about <laughs> you guys if stress is your number one or if it's uh, something else. Um, I guess it maybe like passport would be like terrible if you went like out of state too, or I mean out of country. That's stress um, too. So yeah. Stressful. Yeah. So, yeah. Stress, yeah. Keep adding the stress. Dealing with I, the government, stressful. Yeah. I think one of the hardest things might come to before actually transferring is making that decision. True. Yeah. So going back to you know disappointing your family, Hopefully you're not, you're not, and I don't yeah. think you would yeah, be, you would but, <laughs> but making that decision, you, you know, oh, am I going to graduate on time, you know, financial aid, all the questions that we've answered, going back to those, having those run through your mind, you know, is it, if I transfer, what if I don't like my next school, you know, how do I tell my friends, how do I tell my family, just actually making that decision for yourself, you know, I know a friend that did transfer, and it worked out perfectly, and it's because he just thought, you know, long term. So he was transferring and he said, you know what, maybe, you know, it just, I need that extra semester or I need that extra time. I'm going to make that best decision for me long term. And that was kind of the hardest part for him was just making that first step to begin transferring. Yeah, I agree. Especially if you at your old school had already like made friends, found like your foundation there. And, but it just wasn't the right fit for you school-wise, and then you transfer, and you have to start that all over again, but you're going in, and maybe it's second semester or something, and people already have, like, their friends, and sometimes it's hard to find a fit in that, it, or it can seem like it's hard. People are actually friendlier than you think they are. Always. But um, well, that can, usually. Part, can be intimidating, and sometimes that can cause you to not want to transfer. People are terrible. Never friendly. I would Just say kidding. usually. <laughs> yeah, people are But I would friendly. echo that. I think my my two hardest parts, I think, really they're both equally important. Academically, yes, I would say stress was a huge issue for me, um, especially in the beginning trying to work through. Because as we touched on earlier, you know, maybe you have a certain amount of credits that you're transferring over, but maybe not all of them contribute to the requirements for your major. So maybe there's a few classes that you took that are utterly useless for you now. And that can be really, really frustrating, both from a financial standpoint, an academic, st academic standpoint, um, because you feel like you have to kind of have a do-over. Um, but that's essentially what transferring is. It's an opportunity to start fresh. Um, so with that being said, I think the other hardest part for me was finding my place, um, both with friendship and activities, because... When I was down in Florida, Greek life is huge down there, and I felt obligated to be a part of that, and it was also one of the only ways I knew how to make friends. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the North, it's really not as big, especially at a school like Northeastern. Um, they just they had some Greek life, but not the sorority that I was in in Florida, and I also wasn't interested in joining Greek life at Northeastern. So it took me a while to find my way into a place that I felt comfortable and like I had an identity at the school. Um, 
But if there's one thing I can say about friendship, it's amazing how many friends I've kept from my original school, despite having, you know, the entire East Coast between us. Um, I was recently in my first ever college roommate's wedding. So, you know, you do stay friends with the folks that you meet and are really special to you. Um, but then I made so many more friends at my new school and I was in such a better place that you just eventually find your place, your people. And yeah, I think when I was, you know, 19 or however old I was, I thought that people in established friend groups weren't open to new friends. And that's so silly because nobody's going to be like, you know what? We're good. Like if people, if we have you, sex. <laughs> yeah. So if you join, you know, it's either a club or a team or if you just see people studying in your dorm, you can, even if you're not. It's like super quick. Super hey! Hey! <laughs> What are you doing over there? Don't interrupt them if they're busy. But I mean, I know it's not easy if you're not outgoing and you don't, you aren't comfortable putting yourself out there. But there are ways um, to make friends. I promise, and it might take a little longer because you feel like. Well, yeah. Don't live alone. Don't live alone. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes yeah. you could have made, and I mean, obviously, it worked out for you, but right. That is one thing that I think everybody kind of goes through when they're looking, even as a freshman, mm -hmm. is, oh, I want to just, I want to have a single. Yeah. No, you don't. No. You, no. you really don't. You don't know that you don't want it. But. Even yeah. if you're not best friends with your roommate, you still, like, have that person there. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to have someone to just, even if you're not, you know, best friends, like you said, just to have someone there. Um, because, yeah, I was a brand new student at a relatively large school and even though I'm from the area and I had friends there from high school, I didn't want to just defer to them. Mm -hmm. um, but because I was living alone, I was, you know, going back to my dorm and like, what do I do now? Like, it just, it wasn't conducive to making friendships and putting myself out there. And I'm an outgoing person, so that's, say that's saying a lot about the downfalls of living alone. So don't live alone. Yeah. I think even, like you were just saying, with the study groups, which, if they're quiet, don't interrupt, but um, <laughs> I, I'm an early riser. Like, I wake up extremely early, so I would go down to the dining hall in the morning to grab breakfast, and it was empty, because all college kids are, like, sleeping in pretty late for the mm -hmm. most part, and so there was kids that were down there that were juniors, seniors, and I was a freshman, and I was like, hey, how's it going? Just... I mean, again, it, it does that outgoing personality-wise and having the ability to go up and talk. But at that early in the morning, not too many people. I thought you were going to say you made friends so, with the kitchen staff. Lunch lady, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, right. that's always he a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Those were actually the older people. Extra dessert. He thought they were juniors. But they, were just... <laughs> they were senior <laughs> citizens. They weren't seniors <laughs> in college. That was... <laughs> no, just... Listen, I'm really good at bowling, and I learned how to cross. <laughs> cross knit. Cross stitch. Cross, cross stitch. Cross stitch. God. Really? Well, no, but yeah, I clearly learned one. nothing. <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah, I think that's, yeah, the hardest part about transferring is just the amount of things that you're juggling and trying to keep them in the air so they all don't fall and crumble. Yeah. I think also when I you mean, transfer it's a little dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, though. It's a good Bumble. analogy. Sometimes when you transfer and your credits maybe don't transfer the way you want, you do have to stay for an extra semester after the four years. I know that happens to a lot of people. That happened to a few of my friends. They had to stay for either one semester or two semesters to make up for the credits that didn't transfer. Um, so that can be kind of hard, knowing that you have to either pay for another semester or stay when all your friends have graduated already. But if it's if it's going to a school, getting the education you want, and learning the program that you want to learn, then it's probably worth it. Typically, schools do, I know because Northeastern let me, they'll let you walk in graduation in okay. the time that you were supposed to, um, had you been a, you know, traditional undergraduate, um, but... Blank envelope. Yeah. But again, circling back mm. to, yeah, I got an empty yeah. <laughs> diploma case thing, um, but circling back to community college, you can always investigate if you can fill those credits that you need from community class colleges because they're cheap. Yep. And they're awesome. I mean, my classes at Mass Bay were really, really good. My professors were very dedicated. So it's not, 
you know, taking the easy way out at all. It's just taking a more financially reasonable yeah, way. Yeah, smarter. And possibly abbreviating the time because you could take them at night or on weekends, which is more available at most schools now, but especially at community colleges. Yeah, and that's, again, going back to the first bullet point or first question that we were talking about, where I said transferring, not only thinking about transferring schools, but transferring programs, mm -hmm. um, taking the general requirements from a community college is going to save you a bundle and then transferring into the school and transferring into the program you want. It works both ways for that. So I think that's also important to keep in the, the back of your mind, too. A lot of people are like, oh, it's not the right fit. Well, maybe the community college isn't the right fit, but it's a lot cheaper. And you can get through that to go to whatever it is. Yeah. And then you know it's a temporary basis and it's a, you know, a couple of classes. It's not the long haul. You don't have to live there or anything like that. From the school side of things, too, they have you know, students switching majors, switching programs that are already at the school. Yeah. So you know, guidance counselors or admissions counselors, are, you know, they know how to deal with kids now switching their, their plans and their class schedules where they can help, you know, make it work. Adjusting you, you know, classes. My, I, I switched majors myself and completely switched, you know, from the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences to the School of Management. Yep. But I made sure, like, I was still on track and my guidance counselor immediately, you know, made sure that I wasn't losing anything in that switch and I yeah. could still, you know, graduate on time. So they're there to help you as a resource as well. That's good. Yeah, make, make plans to meet your guidance counselor often because... You guys are going to be pals... <clears throat> Yeah, well, acquaintances <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. that know each other really counseling. well. Might not go to Blackwater together, but <laughs> still hang out. Hey, hang out at Java Blackwater. <laughs> you get old. I bet there's a place that's called that. <laughs> We're just getting them all out. There is now. Know, yeah. Again, sponsor the podcast. I'm actually no going to open a coffee yeah. shop. <laughs> I'm open it right across the street. <laughs> Come on down to Java Blackwater. Uh. But. I think that uh, the guidance counselor the meeting is you should do it at least once a semester, regardless if you're a transfer or you're just enrolled in any sort of program, to make sure that you're on track, making sure that you're taking the right courses. Um, make appointments. Don't just show up. Yes, definitely. Hmm. Definitely. And, uh, <laughs> I was like very serious. Uh, you have no idea how many times I got that eye roll because I just showed up. Hey, Help me. But... <laughs> Uh, certain programs too, especially in the technology field, change so rapidly that a program that you enrolled in might not be the same it was when you were a freshman. So certain programs and classes could get dropped. So you need to make sure that whatever you're taking is, is still lining up. Because uh, I had that, that issue uh, being a web dev major. And then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, we're dropping support for <laughs> .NET. It's <laughs> like, oh, okay, well, I was taking that course, so uh, we need to rearrange some things. Um, <laughs> So yeah, meeting with the guidance counselor is very important, and dealing with stress, talking to your guidance counselor can relieve, alleviate, alleviate. I feel alleviate. Like you like that. <laughs> and if you need more help with stress, counselor counselors. Yes. They have all sorts of counselors at school. It's amazing. 